In today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys the best settings that you guys need to be using if you're playing on console in Warzone. Now, whether you're a Warzone veteran playing since the days of Verdansk or brand new to the game, here's what you should be using. Now, recently I switched to playing on console and broke my personal best Warzone game ever with over 50 kills. So here's the settings on how I did it. Now, starting off with the controller settings here, I actually play on a standard layout on a Scuf controller. If you guys don't know, I'm actually sponsored by Scuf Gaming. So if you guys are looking to level up your controller and level up your game, definitely check out Scuffs in the link down below. They have everything from Xbox, PS4, PS5, PC exclusive, hands down the best controllers in the game. Make sure to use code JOWO. Now, I'm kind of biased. I think that my controllers do look the best of anyone. So if you're looking to pick one up, check it in the link down below. All right, now getting into the nitty gritty of my controller settings here, I do play on standard button layout. And that is because I am on a Joe Wolf PS5 scuff, meaning I have four paddles on the back. So I have my bottom right paddle as my slide, my bottom left paddle as my jump, my top right as my square, reload, obviously open up chest, things like that. And then my top left paddle is my triangle, which I can plate up or swap guns. That's why I play on standard. When the L1 button ping setting came out, I just have stayed on normal. I, pr I press up on my D-pad, so half claw and stuff to live ping enemies. I've never liked L1 button ping. Um, I don't play on flipped, and I make sure to tell everybody, make sure your controller vibration is off. I see a lot of people that play with this setting on. They say it helps their awareness when they're getting shot at and stuff, but this is never a good setting to have on because anytime you're fighting somebody and your controller is vibrating or shaking, that's definitely gonna make you miss more shots. So make sure to have this off. Now going down to my most asked question probably of all time, and that is dead zones. Now, dead zones are controller specific, but I'm gonna explain to you why I have mine the way I do, and if you guys can try this out and like it. So regarding my left stick min and max, I have my left stick, so that is gonna be my movement stick. I have auto tactical sprint on, which I'll explain that later, but I have it on one and 47. So that means that I do not have to be moving my left stick all the way to a certain side for the max to actually get the automatic tactical sp sprint uh, to start working in the game. So my movement and stuff has felt way more fluid from changing my left stick min to one or zero, and then the max at 47, meaning I can make quicker adjustments and movements because I don't have to move my left stick as far to a certain side as, as I used to have to on 100. But give this a try, let me know what you guys think. I'm going on to my right stick min and my right stick max. Now me personally, I like having stick drift. Now I know that sounds absolutely insane because most creators are like, no, you have to like put your right stick min to five so you have no stick drift. Here's why I like this. Because I have paddles on the back of my controller, I'm never taking my right thumb off of my right stick and controller. So that means that my centering and where I want to be shooting is going to be where I, it's always supposed to be because I'm not ever taking my thumb from the stick. Meaning if you're going to be putting your dead zone to five or six, I feel that my shot was way more inconsistent because I have to fight against that dead zone. So instead of, of, of having stick drift, which if I don't touch my right stick, I do, but my right thumbs is always on it. So instead of having to fight that stick drift or that kind of section of dead zone, my shot felt more inconsistent because I could move my right stick and my screen would not move at all. So I felt that that caused inconsistencies in my aim. That's why I do have my right stick min on zero and the max on 100, of course, but my shot feels way more consistent over time because I'm not ever fighting against a dead zone setting in the game. My centering and my shot is always where I want it to be on my screen. Then for my L2 and R2 button dead zone, I have that on three. I do have digital tap triggers, so they are very, very sensitive. That's why I have them very, very low. Now moving on to my aiming here, this section is gonna be very, very important also for graphics later, so bear with me. I currently play on 1010. 0.85 sensitivity. If you're a newer player or catch yourself missing a lot of shots, I would say personally 6.6 six or 7.7 seven seven is the max setting you should go. I just got used to 10.10, 10, so that's what I've always played on. Um, I wouldn't advise going above 10.10 because 10, honestly, past that, you are going to be missing a lot of shots because your screen is obviously moving super fast. But 10.10 10 is the sense I am on and 0.85. If you catch yourself missing shots, 6677 seven is perfect. All right, so going down to your aim response curve type, make sure this is set to dynamic. I do see some people still playing on standard, but most really good players have had this on dynamic since like the early days of Verdansk. So make sure to change this. I still see some people on standard. This will make your aim kind of a, a S curve type for your aim assist. So while you're strafing and shooting, this is gonna make your shot feel the most consistent over time. Now going down to your actual target aim assist and the target aim assist type, I see some people saying that Black Ops is better. 
I have always played on default. I know some people still do play on Black Ops. That is like the, the traditional aim slowdown for all Black Ops games. Me personally, and a lot of people that I know are still on default, give it a shot. Whatever you think, again, some of these, these settings are preference, like your sensitivity and your aim assist type. But again, I have it on default. Some people say Black Ops, that's on them. Now, going down here, not really important settings until we get to gameplay. Now, under the gameplay setting here, I have my automatic tactical sprint on. That means if I push my left stick forward, I'm gonna be going automatically into automatic tactical sprint. I do have my slide maintain sprint setting on. There was a bug in this where you used to have to turn this off because you, you would randomly dive even though that I'm on slide only, but they fixed that. So I do have my slide maintain sprint on. That is gonna be the most responsive slide canceling setting you can have. So definitely change this. Make sure your automatic tactical sprint is on to save your thumbs also from clicking in all the time. I have my auto move forward off, double tap sprint behavior, but I have on auto, auto tax sprint, so it doesn't really matter that much. My ground mantle is off, and then my automatic airborne mantle is set to partial. That means the only time that you ever automatically mantle something is if you're about to fall. But again, I just press my X button twice to automatically mantle stuff because I tried my grounded mantle on and I was just mantling way too many things during gunfights and it was honestly just a pain. I turned it off. Now going down to the slide and dive behavior, I still have my setting on slide only and that is for slide canceling and just have way more responsive and better movement. I do see some people trying hybrid, which I tried, but I click in my left stick on accident way more than I probably should. So I still stay on slide only. I don't have to ever dive. The only time I could see diving being important is like diving off stuff and then pulling your parachute to fly farther. But it hasn't really affected me that much. I tried hybrid, but again, I press and hold my controller pretty tight. So I press in my left stick a lot, so hybrid didn't work for me. But if it does, you guys can try out hybrid. It's pretty cool. Now these settings, just copy these settings. These are like, Less important settings, but are still important, like your sprinting door bash and stuff, instead of having to like stand by a door and open it and stuff as you're fighting and closing doors and running through buildings, you can just run through doors and things like that. Now going down to the tactical stance activation, I personally have my tactical stance activation off. I do not like to use tack stance at all in Warzone. I think it's pointless and it honestly got me killed a lot as I was like sliding into a gunfight. I would go into tack stance for no reason. I personally have it off. Obviously, if you're like grinding camos and stuff, you have to turn it back on. But again, I have this setting personally off because it got very annoying. Now, going on to the interact and reload behavior, make sure this setting is on prioritize interact. That means if there's chest and things like that, you are gonna be opening them instead of just having to reload all the time. Because obviously, as you're dropping into an area, finding a chest and stuff, opening, opening it quick, grabbing stuff off the ground and stuff is important to be the first one. Make sure this is on interact and not reload. Armor play behavior is on apply all. That means while you're fighting and stuff, you can just hold triangle once or your plate button once, and it's just gonna be putting in plates all the time and not having to press and hold to plate up every single plate, which is very, very important. All right, so that is the controller settings. Let's move on to graphics. All right, so on to the graphics settings here. Now, if you guys have liked today's video, make sure you guys like it and subscribe down below for more content like this. Send this to your favorite console buddies. This will definitely help them and help you get more wins if they're playing better. So anyway, let's get on to the on-demand texture streaming. Now I have super fiber internet. I have tried this with on and I've tried it with off and I honestly would just turn it off. I couldn't tell much of a difference with it on, but I, I just have it off now. Um, regarding motion blur. Now, I see a lot of people send me clips still to this day with motion blur on. Make sure you guys weapon motion blur and world motion blur is set to off. This is gonna be very, very important. You don't want any any blur while you're turning or fighting people because that's just only gonna hurt your vision and just be just not look good for your game. Film grain, set this to zero. You don't want any visual noise while you're fighting and playing. Depth of field is gonna be off and then your fidelity cast I have mine on 90, but that's kind of the sharpness of your game and image. You can try from, I would say 70 to 100. I personally like 90, so I would say 90. Eco mode, off. I'm so sorry for my power bill, but it is what it is. You have a capable monitor. Make sure you guys have your 120 Hertz refresh rate on or a capable TV. Now I actually still have to get um, the red cables, but I have, uh, I'm currently playing on 1080p because I don't have HDMI 2.1 cables to go to my capture card. So you can actually play in 1440, which I have a 1440p monitor, but it's sadly set to 1080 because I don't have the right cables yet, but it is what it is. Regarding FOV, now FOV is very, very important. 
As you can see in this image here, your FOV is how zoomed in your camera is in game. Now I play on 120 FOV, but I also sit very, very close to my monitor. So that definitely plays kind of a role in my FOV. Now, if you guys cannot see your enemies and not see your targets, I would say going down to 110 or 105 or 100 would be the best for you. Because 120 is definitely very zoomed out and it's gonna make your enemies and your targets a lot smaller. Now, this does not affect your aim assist or anything like that. It just affects of how big the target is looking on your screen. So that's gonna be very, very important. Now going down to your ADS field of view, make sure this is set to affected. If it's on independent, as you zoom in a gun, it's gonna zoom into ADFOV and then zoom out as you zoom out. That's gonna obviously really hurt your aim and make your guns when you're shooting them look like they have way more recoil. Make sure this is set to affected. And then your weapon field of view is set to wide. That makes your gun actually look a lot smaller and it's gonna make your gun look like it has less recoil, which is probably why a lot of people are like, dude, my gun actually has recoil. Well, make sure you guys have these settings and yours probably won't either. So a couple other settings here that's very, very important is make sure your first person camera movement is set to least. That's kind of like motion blur, but the default is on 100. So this is a setting a lot of people miss because as they're running around and stuff, their screen is gonna be shaking for no reason, which again is never good make sure to set this to least and that is the most important graphic settings you'll need let's go on to audio now onto the audio settings here what i found personally going from pc to console the best setting for console so far that i've seen is soundbar i don't know why that is it says it has a tighter dynamic range and eq whatever that means soundbar i've tried headphones because i do play with earbuds actually i've tried headphones bass boost i've tried home theater everything that i've seen so far and i've heard while i'm playing definitely soundbar is the best but again the problem is with audio and stuff when there's things going off like precision airstrikes mortars things like that it's very very hard to hear now i have all of my war tracks cinematics all that stuff off the dialogue volume is when when your character's calling in a precision airstrike or a UAV or things like that. I have that on 30 and then my effects on 100. That's gonna be audio, footsteps, things like that. That's pretty much the most important setting for audio. Um, try out soundbar. Let me know what you guys think. That's what I've liked the most. But again, it is kind of personal preference for your ears. But I do play with earbuds and stuff like that. And soundbar seems like the best for me. So a couple settings I missed here is make sure your mono audio is off. Reduce tinnitus sound. Make sure to have this on. War tracks off, jug music off, and obviously your hit marker sound effect is preference, but I play a Modern Warfare. That is just, as you're shooting somebody, what it sounds like when you're hitting them with hit markers. So going down to color customization settings here, the way that my game looks so bright and colorful is because I do have my HUD palette on Tritonopia, and then I do have my filter two on both, and that can kind of brighten up your game and give it a little bit more color. Now for YouTube videos and stuff, cause I see a lot of people being like, Joe, your game looks so good. That is just a stream filter on OBS. So my game looks like this for me, same as your guys game does, but for stream and stuff and for videos, I have just some, some added saturation and stuff for the stream only. I wish that the game looked as good on a video as it did for me, but it is what it is. So yeah, make sure to try out filter two, color filter target on both, and the world and interface color intensity on 100. That's gonna give your game some more color and brightness and stuff, so then you can actually see people when you're fighting them. Now for your mini-map, make sure this is on square, not round. Obviously, you can see more of your mini-map if it's on square, which is gonna be important with red dots and stuff being back when you're fighting, seeing the pings on your map and stuff. Make sure this is on square, and it also just looks better in my opinion. I have the rotation on and the compass on. Now, regarding crosshairs, this is actually kind of a great uh, um, topic here. I have my crosshair dot on, and I have the center dot off, because I think that there's times that as I'm fighting, I see some people that just have a crosshair dot on or things like that, but I actually like to see where my crosshairs are on my screen to help my centering, which is gonna be one of the most important things in Call of Duty, which I'll be touching on that in a future video, a future aiming video is centering and all that kind of stuff. But that is my crosshair settings, which I think a lot of people will always pass over. Now with the server latency and packet loss, I do have that on because I do wanna see if I'm lagging in game with the server latency and packet loss. Yes, you can turn this on on console. I see people under my current videos of my new console video it's like dude you're still on pc that doesn't have a setting on console I'm like yes it's literally right here you can turn on your server latency and your packet loss to see while you're playing in the top left of your screen if you're lagging or, or if you have packet loss obviously gameplay tips and tools have this off because then it's just a, an annoying pop-up while you're playing make sure to have this off now last but not least is cross play setting i am on, on ps5 
And I gotta be honest, I tried to play crossplay off and I could never find a lobby. Apparently it does take some time, but if you guys don't like playing against PC players, which I don't blame you, I would hate to play against PC players like myself, but I tried to play with crossplay off. I couldn't find a lobby. Some people said it takes like 10 minutes to 15 minutes and my patience just couldn't let, wait that long for a lobby. So I just play crossplay on and still drop some bombs. But if you guys are trying to play against just console people, you can turn off crossplay and try it out. Now that is gonna wrap up my console settings video. Now let me know down below, have you guys enjoyed my console videos? Do you guys wanna see me stick to console? If you guys are new here, make sure to subscribe down below because I got a ton of content and coaching stuff for you guys. I love you and I'll see you soon. Peace.